What's going on guys? Today we're going to take a look at my drone bag and I'm going to show you what I have at every commercial drone shoot. I'm going to show you the essential gear that I bring, the required documentation for commercial shoots, as well as the must-have emergency items that I never leave the house without. Make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to share a semi-secret accessory that's going to guarantee the most cinematic shots on your drone. The first thing we're going to look at is the actual drone that I use, which is the DJI Mavic 3. Now, I upgraded from the original Mavic Pro last summer, and there has been a considerable amount of benefits in that upgrade. For starters, the camera is so much better. You're also able to change things like the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO, and these are all things that professional videographers use in their DSLR and their mirrorless cameras, so it's so nice to have in your drone. Additionally, I feel that the sensors work a lot better on this drone than the previous drones. The build quality and the packaging seems to be a lot better than previous drones. I'm not as scared with this drone to touch the gimbal because the previous drones have just felt so flimsy and small. And I feel like they just really did a good job at upgrading the build quality. Now I know that this isn't an upgrade to the drone itself, but what DJI has done is with the Mavic 3, they added this protective cover for the Mavic 3. So it just kind of straps on and you know, if you're someone like me who travels a lot with your drone, it's awesome because it protects the camera. You have the propellers all nice and tight in here. And if you're spending so much money on a drone, you wanna make sure it's safe, especially when you're traveling. So this is a huge upgrade that they did with the Mavic 3. The next item in my drone bag is the Mavic 3 battery. Now it's nothing sexy, but it is a huge upgrade from the Mavic Pro. This battery gets about a 45 minute flight time, depending on what mode you're in, as opposed to the Mavic Pro, which got about 25, 30 minutes. The one thing about these batteries is they are pretty pricey, but I haven't had any issues with just having two of them. And of course, you can't fly your drone without a remote. This remote might be the biggest upgrade that I've seen with the drone. What I love is that the joysticks are stored at the bottom of the remote, so you don't have to worry about damaging them or breaking them while you're traveling. They also added a cine mode, which makes it so you fly a lot slower and it's easier to get cinematic shots. Not only that, but if you fly in cine mode, your battery is gonna last a lot longer. And one of the most practical things is you can leave your phone in its case when you're flying with the remote. They do make a remote where you don't need to use your phone, which is awesome, but it is super expensive. So for now, I'm sticking with the original remote. Now let's take a look at the boring required stuff that you have to have if you're gonna be a commercial pilot, but I'll go quick. The first thing we'll look at is stickers. So these stickers are on my drone, on my remote, and they just have owner information, my business name, email, as well as my FAA registration number. So if I ever lose my drone, if I crash it, it's a way to trace it back to me. The next thing I have is my registration card. So this shows that the drone is registered to me. This lasts about three years, then you have to renew it. So always have this with you on your shoots. If you wanna get paid for your drone services, you need to pass the part 107 test. Once you hopefully pass that, you will get a card verifying that you passed it and this bad boy lasts only two years and then you have to retake the test. It is tricky, so make sure you study. And it's probably not needed, but I keep it, but it's actually my test score that I got on the part 107. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are some emergency items that I bring on every shoot. The first one being extra propellers. Now we don't wanna crash our drones ever, but if we crash them and they somehow stay intact and you just need to switch out the propellers, you'll be prepared. The next thing that I always have is the extra joysticks that my drone came with. Since the joysticks are removable, there is a chance that you might lose them, so it's always good to have a spare. The last emergency item I bring is the extra cords that it comes with for different types of phones. This might seem kind of silly to have, but if you're an iPhone user and your phone dies, or someone else has an older version of the iPhone with a different port, you might be lucky and they might allow you to borrow their phone. I've luckily never had to do this, but if your phone dies and you need to borrow someone else's and they have a different port than yours, you'll be covered. And as promised, the semi-secret accessory that I bring to all my shoots to get cinematic shots. And that is going to be ND filters. So you might see ND filters on your DSLR or mirrorless cameras, but if you haven't, they're basically just sunglasses for your camera. These will allow you to have a little bit more creative freedom when it comes to aperture, ISO, and shutter speed, so you don't have to crank anything up and ruin your image. To swap these out, you just need to pop the current cover to the left, place the new one on, twist to the right, lock it in place, and you are good to go. All right, so that does it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something. And if you have any questions, especially on some of those required documents, feel free to leave a comment, send me a message. 
and uh, I'll help you out wherever I can. So much love, always be curious, seize the Kraken, peace.